The best case scenario for the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region is that Ukrainian forces will be able to contain Russia's advance in the Donbass until they achieve even small gains while holding the captured Russian territory with a sustainable military commitment, writes the American magazine Foreign Affairs. The offensive could also prompt changes in Western policy on the use of long-range strike weapons and inject much-needed energy into the thinking of Ukraine's allies about the way forward at this stage of the war, the publication says. It is also noted that the worst-case scenario is that in a few months Ukraine will lose significant tracts of land in the east and will not retain territory in Kursk that it could use as a bargaining chip. The offensive offers opportunities, but also carries significant risks and costs. In any case, Kiev hopes that the offensive in Kursk will spur a change in the perception that the war is on a negative trajectory, unlock additional material aid, and change Western restrictions on weapons, the magazine writes. It is noted that the Kursk operation will also force Moscow to think about the fact that Ukraine retains options and that the outcome of this war is still undetermined, although this offensive does not correct the current material imbalance in the war. The operation was well executed, quickly achieving a few limited but important objectives that would have made it an effective week-long raid. If it could have drawn significant Russian forces away from other fronts, the payoff would have been more than worth it. But so far, there is little evidence that this has been done. So far, Russia has pulled back from Zaporozhye and Kharkov while maintaining offensive operations around the eastern towns of Volodar, Pokrovsk, Toretsk and Kupiansk. Russia's response to the Kursk appears to represent an economy of force to deter an invasion as it continues to prioritize offensive operations in Donetsk. Moscow may be exercising some caution, recognizing that in past years, Ukraine has tended to launch attacks on multiple fronts. This may not be Ukraine's only planned offensive, the article says. It is noted that Ukrainian troops are currently digging in, in Russia, and creating their own military administration in the region, intending to hold the Kursk cauldron for the foreseeable future. Much depends on how Moscow reacts. If Russian forces rush Ukrainian lines, Kiev could force Moscow to fight on its own terms by increasing pressure along the entire front. Kursk could weaken Russia's offensive power by taking the fight to Russian territory. Moscow could also feel compelled to create a significant operational reserve and deploy larger garrisons along its border. This would also reduce the combat power Russia could have to fight in Ukraine, the magazine writes. The publication added that Kiev will have to choose whether to hold on to what it has or invest more resources in the Kursk operation to force Russia to undertake a much larger effort to counter it. But the risks should not be underestimated. At least 129 people were killed and 59 others injured during an attempted prison break in Congo, said Interior Minister Shabani Luku. The incident was reported at the nation's biggest Makala prison in the capital Kinshasa. It currently has between 14,000 and 15,000 detainees, according to official figures. Most of them are people awaiting trial, Amnesty International said in its most recent country report on the Congo. The provisional toll is 129 dead, including 24 by gunfire, after warning, the other victims have died by jostling or suffocation. There are also 59 injured people taken into care by the government, said Luku on X, Makala Prison, Congo's main penitentiary with a capacity for 1,500 people, holds over 12,000 inmates, most of whom are awaiting trial, Amnesty International said in its latest country report. The facility has recorded previous jailbreaks, including in 2017 when an attack by a religious sect freed dozens. Gunfire inside the prison started around midnight on Sunday into Monday morning, residents said. A senior government official earlier said only two deaths were confirmed during the incident, a figure disputed by rights activists. The prison has recorded previous jailbreaks, including in 2017 when more than 4,000 prisoners escaped from the facility after an attack by armed men at night. Authorities had been trying to reduce overcrowding, with dozens of inmates released in recent months.
Justice Minister Constant Mutamba called the attack a premeditated act of sabotage carried out to undermine efforts to improve the condition of prisons. Investigations are underway to identify and severely punish those who instigated these acts of sabotage. They will receive a stern response, Mutamba said.